today I'd like to talk about having a black and white perspective on things. And maybe you're now thinking, oh, I don't have a black and white perspective on things. Please try to watch the rest of this video still. You may find that you might have it in some areas. Or maybe you're in the other camp and saying, we have to have black and white perspectives. Let me be clear, not having a black and white perspective doesn't mean accepting everything or making excuses for everything. So let's start with the idea that something is just evil. I want to make it clear, I'm not referring to people's actions here. Actions can be evil. If you ask me, it's the only thing that can be evil. Harmful actions should not be excused, but wherever possible we should understand them. What I take issue with as far as the idea of there being evil goes is that it is far too often applied to people, either individually or groups, ideas, and so on and so forth. The problem with thinking that someone is just inherently evil is that they become fair game in everybody's eyes. It becomes okay to hate them. And once you've convinced yourself that someone is just evil, what they do, even if it's the same as what the people you consider to be good are doing, will be considered by you to be evil. Let's talk about the Jews, for example. Before World War II, it was fairly common to hate the Jews. For a long time, they weren't allowed to take on a trade. And this wasn't as a result of people noticing that they didn't do a good enough job, or that they were lazy. No, it was merely because of their appearance and their religion. So, the Jews began trades of their own, including banking. And ever since, to this day, there is this pervasive stereotype that the Jews are greedy, that they take our money, that they cheat us out of our money. Now, part of this prejudicial idea is that originally, laymen didn't know math well enough to be able to tell if they had been cheated or not, if the money that they walked away with was the correct amount. However, without the distrust, it wouldn't have become such a widespread idea. After all, Christians undertook countless different trades. And yet not everyone immediately suspected the man building a horse carriage of doing a poor job assembling the wheels, the tailor of taking too long a time so that he would be paid more. No, this came about because people simply believed that they were evil. To this day, many people hate gypsies. They won't hire them because maybe they'll steal and they look kind of funny. What, what is that they're wearing? Maybe they smell. Now, on account of not being able to work, they'll either perform tricks hoping to get tips or they'll steal. Of course they will. If no one will hire them, those are their options to perform or to steal. They're human beings. You can't expect them to just lay down and die just because they're unpopular. Every single living organism on this planet has a drive to survive as well as one to multiply in case you were thinking of suggesting that maybe they should just not procreate. The idea of someone just being evil is also the only way you can explain 
that there are actually Muslims, and I'm not saying this goes for all Muslims, but there are actually Muslims who suggest that the Jews brought the Holocaust upon themselves. How do you bring the death, the brutal, structured slaughter of six million people onto yourself? And let's not forget, some of these were children. They were civilians. They were not soldiers. And this kind of thinking is far more common than we like to admit. Think hard. Is there maybe some group of people that you sell short and where you turn their actions, however constructive they may be, into something negative? And some people also like to think that certain ideas are evil. A popular target is socialism. Now, other than the fact that a lot of critics of this idea conveniently forget that almost every single time a country has become communist, it was forced upon the people, which is not actually the idea of socialism. No, the idea as proposed by Karl Marx is that it will happen on its own. But other than that, a lot of people tend to think of socialism as just one whole idea, as opposed to a lot of ideas. And while I'm not arguing that complete socialism would realistically work, I would agree that it would always turn into a dictatorship, because it's human nature. Eventually, a leader will emerge, and if there isn't a democracy, we can't stop him from abusing his power. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. However, there may still be good ideas within socialism. And by automatically jumping to avoiding everything that even remotely looks like socialism, we are shooting ourselves in the foot. Other than the title of it being a perfect example of what George Orwell in 1984 dubbed Newspeak, in other words, calling something a word with a positive meaning so that no one would dare argue against it and so that we would automatically associate it with something positive, the Patriot Act is in fact quite totalitarian in nature. Part of communism and Nazism both partially socialist, keeping in mind once again that they were forced through as opposed to allowed to eventually evolve into pure socialism, which was Marx's idea, had constant surveillance to the extent that they could. And I'm not saying that the Patriot Act hasn't helped capture potential terrorists. What I am saying is, you can't claim that it is entirely non-socialist. And if you think the Patriot Act is a good thing, then right there is an example of something good that was lifted from socialism. The fact is, it's very difficult to avoid everything that has once been employed by someone, something, or some idea that you might consider to be evil. Moving on to the idea of anything being completely good. The problem here is like the photo negative of the problem with the idea that anything is inherently evil. When you believe that something is 100% good, you will make excuses for it when it makes mistakes you will resign yourself to, well, at least it's not the other thing, which is evil. How else can you possibly explain the Catholic Church not having lost all of its followers the moment it became clear that for years the sexual abuse of children has been going on, it's been known about, and it's been kept hidden. The Pope 
was more interested in protecting his clergy than protecting the children. The idea that any one thing is inherently good was a large part of the reason we had kings for so many years. You see, they used to believe that the king was appointed by God, because God gives us children, so when a king has a son, not a daughter, because women can't possibly rule, according to any monotheistic religion, that son was given to him by God. And it doesn't matter if this son grows up and turns out to be insane, utterly incapable of running a kingdom. No, he's still going to remain in power because it's good. When you think a person or a rule is good, everything they do will be justified by you. No matter how wrong other people might say it is, or you deep down might feel it is, you will still make excuses because you have convinced yourself that it is good, that it is perfect, and that the alternative is evil, not just a little, but completely. When it comes right down to it, almost everything has both positive and negative aspects to it.